In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your development environment for the Swedbot 2 tournament. Uh, here are some of the prerequisites. So I'll assume that you have installed Git, uh, JDK 1.8 and uh, IDEA 15. Uh, you can download the community edition, which is free, and it should be sufficient, sufficient for uh, what we are going to do here. Uh, and you'll also need an account on Bitbucket. Uh, this video will be on uh, Java and the IDEA uh, ID, but uh, if you are going to use a different programming, programming language or a different ID, you may still uh, find a lot of uh, useful information in this video. I'll also show you uh, some basics of working with Git, and I'll demonstrate how to implement uh, a basic bot using test driven development. Uh, we'll start by creating a, a Git repository for our bot. Uh, we'll want to fork the sweet bot to Java Kit, which you'll find at this URL. Uh, click fork. And yeah, it assumes that you are already locked into the big bucket, otherwise you won't be able to fork it. Uh, now I'll need a name for my repository. I'll uh, call my bot uh, orgbot, so the repository name will be cbot2-orgbot. Click for repository, and in a few seconds it should be created. And now, as it's created, we are, we are ready to import it to our ID. Uh, we can access the repository uh, via either SSH or HTTPS. I'll use HTTPS, uh, copy the address, and open my IntelliJ IDEA, click File, New, Project from Version Control Kit, and paste the address of the repository and click clone. Uh, now I'm asked for mm, my master password. Uh, since I've already set up my Bitbucket password, I'm not asked for it, but you may be if it's the first time you're uh, connecting to it. So you'll need to enter your Bitbucket password. Okay, there we go. Uh, so now the the Git repository is imported, and we have a new IDEA project, and we can open it in this window. And because the the starter kit uses Gradle, uh, we can import Gradle project, which should make setup much easier for us. Uh, we'll use Java 8, so select so like 1.8. Click OK, and it's setting up, and once it's set up, we'll need to open the Gradle tab here at the right hand side, and click this uh, refresh button, and it will actually, uh, it should configure the, the project from the Gradle setup. And we can also execute uh, the test action from Gradle, see if it's working. Uh, here we are asked if you want to uh, add some of the, the IDEA configuration files to our Git repository. I don't want to do that, so I'll click Cancel here. And we can see that the test action has been uh, executed successfully. The, the project has been compiled. And... Uh, some tests have been uh, have been executed successfully. Now, if we go to version control, we'll see that there's uh, a whole lot of unversioned files here. Uh, these are the, the new IDEA configuration files that have been created. I want to ignore them so that they are not listed here. So. I ignore everything under the .idea directory, and now they should go away. We still have this project file, 
but we'll get into it in uh, a little while. Now we also need to uh, do a little bit of uh, a little bit more of the project setup. So we'll go to project structure and select uh, the right SDK, and we can also rename the projects to match our repository name. So we need to see what to the org bot. And we'll uh, actually want to also rename it in the Gradle settings. So that's here. And now we we'll want to click this button again to uh, show that these changes take effect. Click OK. And we'll actually want to submit this, uh, this Gradle configuration file to our repository. So let's create a, a change list for it. Uh, we'll call it named project. We we'll want to make it active. And we'll move the modified files to the change list. And we can commit it. So right click the change list and select the commit. Uh, yeah, there's another configuration file. We don't want it in the repository. We want to ignore it. Okay. So now our project uh, should be more or less set up. And we can uh, we can start working on our our bot or AI. Uh, first thing we'll want to do is create a, a class for the AI and uh, reference it from um, from the main main file. So let's create a new change list. Call it um, org bot AI. And we'll go to uh, the bot server and here change the, the default uh, sample bot that seems there to our uh, our new class, which doesn't exist yet. So we'll get an error here. And if we click Alt Enter, we can create that class and we'll want it to go to the suite bot to AI package. Click OK, and now the class is created. I want to create any JavaDoc for it, so I'll just delete the, the JavaDoc template. And uh, we have an error because uh, we are implementing the bot AI interface, uh, but we don't actually have the implementations of it. The methods. So if we click Alt Enter, we can select Implement Methods, and it will create the, the method headers with empty bodies. Now we should actually be able to to compile the project, and we can actually run all the tests. So that will also will compile the project and run the tests. We'll see if we haven't broken anything. We haven't. And we can go ahead and submit the change. Now, we have an empty class which doesn't do anything, so we'll want to do at least something basic. And uh, what we'll do uh, is a very simple uh, strategy which we just alternate two moves say this moves will be jump and duck. And we'll start by creating a test for it. So, uh, and yeah, we also need uh, a change list. So, we'll call it alternate jump and duck. Um, we'll create a test. I did 
Pulidotan tayo. Tignan nga naman. Until uh, create a test method and call it shoot alternate jump and duck. We'll instantiate our orbooked AI. And we'll assert that uh, when the the initialize and make move method is called with any game setup. We don't care about the game setup at this point, so we'll just pass it now. So so this method is called at the very beginning uh, of the game. That's uh, this way the the AI learns about uh, the game setup and it's supposed to return its first move. So we'll expect that the first move will be jump. And then then next uh the, the make move method is going to be called. So so in the first round it's this initialize and make move method and in every next round it's the, the make move and that one will pass uh all the moves that uh the other uh bots have made. Yeah, we don't care about that, so Currently, we are just creating a very simple strategy which doesn't care about what's going on in the game. It just alters jump and duck, and that's all it does. So, so we don't really need to worry about uh, passing it any, any useful information. So, in this case, it should return duck. Mm -hmm. And let's say we'll add two more. So, the next make move should return jump again and another should be turned up. So that will be our first test. Uh, we can run it. And there is some problem here. Uh, okay. Well, All right. Uh, yeah, we haven't uh, specified that we are using Java 8 here. So yeah, in the project setup, we we'll want the language level set to 8. Yeah. Okay. So this is fixed, and we can run our test. And yeah, it failed obviously because we haven't done anything yet. So we want to fix the test. And the initialize and make move should return jump. And then the make move uh We'll need to keep track of uh, the state that we are at. So we'll need to at least remember what our last move was. So we'll create a field for it. Call it previous move. And we we'll want to set it to what we are returning in the initialization. So Set to jump, and here in the make, make move we'll uh, check if it's jump. And if yes, we want to return dark, and otherwise we'll. And return jump. And we we'll run our test. And it's still not working. 
so we can see where it failed. It failed here on the second call of the make move. And you can probably guess why. The reason is that uh, we are not updating the previous move variable here in the make move. So we want to fix that. Uh, I guess the easiest way is that we store what we are returning in the previous move variable or previous move field, then return it. Okay, run the test again, and now it passed. And so we can go ahead and submit the change. So we'll commit it. And at this point, uh, everything is committed only lo locally. Uh, it's not yet uh, on the, the server, so to get it there, we'll need to select git and vcs git and push, and then push all our local change list to the server. Just click push, and it should be there. Uh, to verify this, we can open the repository on Bitbucket and uh, click on commits, and you can see that our changes are here. We can even look at the details. Now, uh, let's take a look uh, on how we can use Git from a command line. So, I have uh, a command line window here on a Linux server, which happens to be the, the game server. You'll be able to uh, connect to it too, and you'll learn how to do it on the website, on uh, speedbot2.netsuite.com. Uh, so, yeah, let me find uh, the repository address again. So, put it to my clipboard and it's frozen. Okay, so we'll do git clone and our repository name. And now we are asked for our Bitbucket password. Okay, so now here's our code. And we can try to build it. So Gradle W build should build it, or we could even use this uh, build uh, SH script, which basically does the same thing. So it's successfully built, and tests have been run. Everything is successful. Uh, so let's make some changes to the code now. So I'll first uh, change the test because I want to do this in uh, a test-driven way. And let's see, uh, let's assume that we have uh, changed our mind and instead of alternating jump and duck, we we'll want to alternate some other two moves, say jump and fire. So. Let's change the test, so every second move should be fire. We can run the test. And it failed. So let's fix the production code now to match the test. We'll go to main sweetbot to AI workbot and just 
change dark to fire here. And that should do the trick. So let's try to run the test again. Okay, now it's succeeded. Uh, so now we'll want to uh, push these changes uh, to the Git repository. Uh, if we type git status, uh, we'll see uh, which files we have modified, and also we'll see uh, the the files in uh, under this uh, directory, uh, which are which are not included uh, in the in the Git repository. And we actually don't want to put it there, so we'll ignore these two. But we'll want to uh, add these changes. So we'll start by staging these files by executing git add and the list of uh, the files that we'll want to stage. And now if we type git status again, we can see that these are green now, so they are ready to be committed. So we'll commit them. We'll type it commit dash uh, m, and now we'll need to a description for our change list. So we'll be alternate uh, change and fire. And now. The Git complains that we uh, haven't set up our user details, so we'll fix that. I'll configure my email address. And my name. Now, Run the commit again. This time it succeeded, and we we'll want to push the change to the server. So run git push. Type the password. And it's done. If we uh, look at the list of commits again, we can see that the change is now here. And the last thing we'll uh, take a look at is uh, how to resolve conflicts. So say that you know, this, uh, this command line change has been done by somebody else, and in the meantime we have done something uh, conflicting uh, in, in IntelliJ. Uh, so say that there uh, we decided that we would alternate some other two moves, say fire and duck. So first we'll, yeah, we should actually rename the test. So we should alternate fire and duck. The first move should be fire, then a duck, then a fire. Run the test. Fails, fix the production code. So the first one should be fire. Maybe we can return the variable instead, so it'll be better. And if the previous was fire, we'll do duck. Otherwise, we'll do fire. Run the test, if, and it passes, so we can submit the change to the server. So we'll commit, and actually we can do the commit and push at the same time by using this option. So let me try to do that. And now it didn't succeed because we had conflict. So the push has been rejected. So what uh, we can do now is that we merge the we merge the conflicting files. So click merge. 
And now we have conflicts in these two files, so we'll uh, resolve them one by one. So here's the here's the, the, the merge tool. Uh, on the left-hand side, uh, we can see our local changes, and on the right-hand side are the changes that we have done on the co command line, and in the middle is the, is the resolved file. So we can decide for each of these conflicting changes uh, which one we want to use. So say here we want to actually everywhere we want our latest change. So this way uh, we apply the left hand side changes and we, uh, we could equally well just click accept left. That would do the same thing. So now we'll click uh, apply, confirm, and uh, manage the second file. Here we'll do the same thing. We'll we want to prefer the changes that we have done in IDEA. Apply. And now, uh, okay, it's not pushed yet, but we have resolved the conflict, and we can actually run the test see that we haven't broken anything, we haven't. So we can go ahead and and push. So you can see that we are pushing two changes now. The first one uh, is, uh, is modifying the strategy so that it alternates fire and dark, and second is resolving the, the conflict. Push. And it's on the server. It's on the server. Okay, so that's all I wanted to cover in this video. I hope it was useful. And thank you for your attention.